Hey, my name is Alex. I am a hospital pharmacist. So today, I will quickly talk about metformin, which you will see quite often in practice. I have included timestamps in the description, so feel free to skip to the part that you want. So what is metformin? Metformin is an anti-diabetic drug that belongs to a class called bigranide. You'll see it very common in patients with diabetes. Specifically, its main indication is type 2 diabetes mellitus. It's a very popular drug for type 2 diabetes because it's the first line pharmacological drug of choice if lifestyle and diet interventions cannot control blood sugar levels. You might see metformin be used alone, or if it's not sufficient, metformin may be used together with other anti-diabetic drugs. Metformin also has a indication for something called polycystic ovary syndrome. However, I'm not really going to focus my time on this and instead focus my time on type 2 diabetes for the purpose of this video. So how does it work? Metformin essentially lowers blood glucose levels uh, by three ways. So your first way is that it reduces the amount of gluconeogenesis or in other words, it reduces the amount of glucose being made. The second way is it increases the muscle sensitivity to insulin. And by doing so, it basically encourages your muscles to use more of the glucose in the body. And therefore, it indirectly reduces your glucose levels. And thirdly, it also delays glucose absorption in your gastrointestinal tract. The main side effects are very much focused on the gastrointestinal tract, uh, which includes nausea and vomiting, abdominal pain, diarrhea, reduced appetite. You may also see taste disturbance as a side effect, but this is more of a nervous system disorder rather than a GI side effect. If the patient can't tolerate the GI side effects from metformin, then you might suggest to switch the metformin formulation to a modified release, which could potentially help control the symptoms to some extent. The idea behind modified release is that it gives a gradual release of metformin in the upper GI, uh, which improves the patient's tolerability to the medication. Metformin is also recommended to be taken with or after food with a whole glass of water to minimize these side effects. And just a side note, make sure to read on the general guidance to healthy eating. I'll stick a link in the description for you to look at. The other key side effect of metformin you should learn is lactic acidosis. So lactic acidosis is basically a condition whereby your body has too much lactate in the blood, which can be caused by metformin, especially if the levels of metformin is high in your body. Um, so lactic acidosis can definitely be quite life-threatening. So when you take metformin, it does its job in the body and then it gets eliminated mainly from the kidneys. However, the key thing to note is that metformin is eliminated unchanged, so there are actually no metabolites. Because metformin is mainly excreted unchanged via the kidneys, it's normally okay for patients with normal functioning kidneys to take metformin, However, you'll need to double check for the patients with reduced renal function, for example, those with chronic kidney disease. So just to expand on this a bit more, if you give metformin to someone with reduced kidney function or someone with severe renal impairment, then what you expect to see is that the metformin will build up in the body because the kidneys can't keep up with getting rid of metformin quick enough and therefore exposes the patient to higher and prolonged levels of metformin. This means increased risk of lactic acidosis, which is the life-threatening condition that we mentioned previously. But typically, if the patient's EGFR is less than 30 mL per minute, then we would normally withhold or discontinue the metformin and use something else that would be more appropriate. If the EGFR is between 30 to 44 mL per minute, then you would consider limiting the max daily dose to 1000 milligrams. So going back to lactic acidosis, usually you don't see it and it's rare. However, there are cases which can further increase the risk of lactic acidosis. So for example, patients with acute kidney injury. So with AKI, it causes a reduction in EGFR 
or renal function, which means potentially more metformin than normal in the body. Therefore, putting the patient at a increased risk of developing that lactic acidosis. So sometimes people might think that metformin is nephrotoxic and it's stopped in AKI patients because it's toxic to the kidneys. But as we've established, this isn't actually the case. It's more to do with the with this uh, increased risk of lactic acidosis. Metformin is usually restarted after the AKI resolves, but double check with the doctor before you come to this conclusion. If you need to know what acute kidney injury is, I've done a video on this, so make sure you have a look if you're unsure. I'll pop a link in the description for you to look at. So next we have severe hypoxia, which basically means there's not enough oxygen in the body for your tissues. If there's not enough oxygen, your body will be forced into anaerobic metabolism, which means increased lactate production as a consequence. If you use metformin on top of that, then you're basically making the problem potentially worse. So you should use metformin with caution in patients with or at risk of hypoxia. For example, patients with heart failure, respiratory failure and myocardial infarction so patients with these conditions are relatively more at risk to hypoxia compared to a healthy person. So binge drinking on alcohol may also result in lactic acidosis. So we would use metformin with caution in someone with acute intoxication of alcohol. Long story short, metformin should be used in caution with anything that may also precipitate lactic acidosis. So the other key information you should know about is metformin should not be used together with contrast media. If your metformin dose needs increasing, it should be done so gradually, which also helps to control your side effects to a certain degree. You should also take note that metformin is not a replacement for dietary and lifestyle interventions. It should be used alongside your adjusted diet and with regular exercise for the optimal effect. So to finish the video off, here's a quick quiz. So three questions, uh, you have a massive five seconds for each one. Does metformin have a role in type 1 diabetes? Does metformin cause hypoglycemia, i.e. low blood sugar levels? And uh, lastly, does metformin cause weight loss? And that is it for this video. Be sure to subscribe to my channel to get updates for my next videos just like this one. Make sure you share it with your colleagues if you find it helpful. And thank you for watching.